Hello, my friends. I'm sorry for getting this out so late today. It's the 4th of July, 2024, and here is the daily brief. And if you're looking for Ukraine war news and you're not familiar with me, I do these every day. Usually I do the daily brief in the morning and I do three big stories in the evening. So the big story today is going to be what's happening in Russia. But before we get to that, let's look at this. Okay, 1,200 Russians off the battlefield. That includes nine tanks, 17 armored combat vehicles, 65 artillery pieces, and 73 vehicles and fuel tanks, which is pretty high. And it's been up at 11 to 1300, somewhere in that range for the last few weeks. In fact, it's been like that for the last two months or so, since about May 10th. Andrew Perpetua's list of identifiable losses, Russia lost 65, 22 are combat assets, and the others are just like trucks and other things along those lines to Ukrainians, or Ukraine's 23, six of which are combat assets, but that may include a MiG-29, which may have been destroyed. So that's a good, healthy ratio. I'm looking for three to one, generally speaking, and by the time I'm comfortable, just because this is somewhat of a war of attrition, and in a war of attrition, uh, Russia has a huge advantage in both men and material. Meanwhile, Russia launched 22 Shahid drones. 21 of those were shot down, but there's still some damage that has happened. Number of victims as a result of an enemy attack in Kharkiv rises to 14, among them three children. So you're seeing a picture of a damaged building. I mean, the Kharkiv attack, it was just a residential neighborhood. Look at this. As a result of the enemy attack on Kharkiv today, four, well, last night into today, 14 people aged from one month to 82 years were injured. There's no military purpose here. This is called a war crime, but the world's not doing anything about this. The head of the regional administration recalled that the shelling occurred at 1605 in Kharkiv. Two private houses were partially destroyed, 10 private houses, 12 apartment buildings, cafe buildings, a post office, two-story sports club, and it, two university buildings were damaged. What if that has any military value? None of it. That's called a war crime. Okay. Meanwhile, the actual temperature is heating up. Heat up to 41 degrees Celsius is returning to Ukraine, reports the meteorological resource Tropical Tidbits. Now, for those of you who are Americans, about a third of my audience, that means about 105 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty hot. Death toll rose to six people after the Russian attack on the Dnipro. That was yesterday, um, and we were up to like four people, I think, and 35 or so injured. Now it's 53 injured, and six people have died as a consequence of that attack. Yesterday, actually not yesterday, the day before yesterday, Orban called for a ceasefire in Kiev. Maybe it was yesterday. I don't remember. It was within the last day or two. Volodymyr Zelensky, in an interview with Bloomberg, commented on the Viktor Orban proposal for a ceasefire. Ceasefire. He said, as for the ceasefire in war, we cannot simply talk about a ceasefire. We need a plan for our people. We cannot just trust Putin. To us, he's a murderer and an aggressor. And so that you're going to trust a ceasefire to actually take place, I, I, you know, I understand why he wouldn't be uh, inclined to believe that it's actually going to take. In other news in Chasov Yar, Russian armed forces achieve key success in the summer campaign, according to Pravda. So they say Ukrainian forces lose Chazov Yar and retreat to Konstantinivka. But did they really? I'll show you on a map where things are and we'll try to figure this out. Russian forces take total control of Chasov Yar, a city in the Bakhmut area of the Donetsk region. The Ukrainian military are thus forced to retreat to the strategic center of Donbass, the settlement of Konstantinivka. Okay, so let's look at this. This is a headline from CBS News. Russia says forces seize part of the key Ukraine town of Chasov Yar as deadly airstrikes continue. And if we read this, the Russian Defense Ministry said its troops had liberated, you know, they liberate by destroying things right to the ground, the Novi district of Chazov Yar. But it was unclear if it was claiming its forces had crossed the canal, which runs through the eastern part of town. So here they're saying they liberated the Novi district. What are we talking about? Well, this is the Novi district. I think this is the canal that they're talking about. And here is Chazov Yar proper. Now, if we pan out, you can see on the map what this what we're really talking about. We're talking about the small district over here, and I think the canal's here, and most of Chasov Yar is over there. Doesn't mean it's not being destroyed or pummeled with artillery, but I think this was a little bit overblown. 
Okay, here's another article about it. The AFU has retreated in Chasovyar. The Ukrainian Defense Forces have withdrawn from the canal neighborhood in the town of Chasovyar in Donetsk region. Ukraine is solving the problem of shortage of servicemen and forming new brigades, but it's unable to equip them due to the delay of insufficiency of Western military aid. Well, that's a problem. You can form all the soldiers, but if you don't have the weapons for them, that becomes a significant problem. Recall Zelensky in a recent interview with Bloomberg said that the Ukrainian forces are now in a more favorable position in terms of staffing than a few months ago. It was critical about two months ago. But Ukraine's ability to conduct a successful counteroffensive operation depends on equipping new brigades with heavy equipment. And this is what it looks like when Russia liberates. It looks absolutely terrible. Now, some resources are on the way. So here we saw just a day or two ago, Department of Defense in the United States announced a new military aid package for Ukraine valued at more than $2.3 billion. Our warriors will be strengthened with additional air defense interceptors, anti-tank weapons, and so on and so forth. Okay, but what does that really mean when you drill down? So here's an article about that in CNN. When you drill down, you see a different picture. So it's 2.3 billion, right? But the new package includes 150 million in artillery rounds, interceptor missiles, and anti-tank weapons. This proportion of the package is drawn directly from U.S. stockpiles. An additional 2.2 billion, or most of it, will be purchased for Ukraine from U.S. arms manufacturers under the Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative, a program that takes longer to supply the weapons but provides longer-term support for Kyiv. So it's 2.3 billion, but it's it's not like 2.3 billion worth of stuff is going to get there right away. It's going to take a long time, and it's hard to fight the enemy without those weapons. Jay Keefe talks about this. Ukraine's allies promise a lot of gear, but it seems most announcements are merely PR with no intent to actually deliver. Now, that's a little bit harsh, but I mean, if I was in Ukraine right now, I might feel that same way. Now, Zelensky says a counteroffensive action is possible when we have the equipment that Congress and Europeans have voted for. Well, that's true. I mean, it's hard to do that without having that equipment. Okay, meanwhile, in Russia, here's what's going on. The colonel whose regiment carried out the massacre in Bucha has been detained. This is some kind of ironic, poetic justice. In Ryzan, officers of the FSB military counterintelligence detained Colonel Gorodilov. Uh, the reason for the detention is a case of fraud, particularly on large-scale propagandist report. He commanded the 234th Guards Airborne Assault Regiment that was so destructive in Bucha, and it looks like he's going to be going to jail for a long time because... I, now, I don't know if this is part of that military purge or what exactly, but, but he's going to jail, it looks like, one way or another. What else is happening in Russia? Well, Jane Keefe posted this as Russia tries to expand its prison of nations model once again globally. Let's remind ourselves how it works. All resources are sucked to Moscow, leaving regions in brutal poverty and serving to pour their populations into foreign wars of conquest. Given a chance, Putin will do the same with Ukraine. Now, if you look at this, this is the top 15 regions by number of deceased soldiers per 100,000 population compared to Moscow. Here's Moscow at 0.9, and here's up to 57. Wow. And these are regions that you probably never heard of on the top. So that's the way it works. In addition, meanwhile in Russia, Anton Gurashenko reports one of the most modern missile ships of the Russian Navy was set on fire from the inside, and secret documents were stolen. A Russian military officer voluntarily defected to the Ukrainian side. A Russian citizen with the call sign Goga served in the Russian Baltic Fleet and allegedly wanted to quit because of Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine. In 2023, he turned to the GUR. I Want to Live project. Since then, he helped the Ukrainian intelligence agencies and organized a sabotage on the Serpukov ship. Together with the secret documents, Gogol was taken out of the territory of the Russian Federation by Ukrainian intelligence agency. So, hey, it's one less ship that they're going to have to worry about. And apparently this ship is going to be in some such a serious condition that it'll be offline for some time. And meanwhile in Russia, the App Store removes VPN services at the request of Russian authorities. Such services as Proton, Nord, Red Shield, and Lee VPN have disappeared from the App Store. The official reason is non-compliance with Russian law because they're getting news from outside of Russia. And this is the main way that they trick the computer system into allowing them to get sources outside Russia. So they're doubling down on that.
Okay, last little bit. Now, yesterday I talked about how if you want to donate to Project Constantine, their goal is 320,000 pounds, and they've already raised, as of yesterday's daily brief, 58,784 dollar or pounds, rather, excuse me. And today, just before I started shooting this, I refreshed it, and they're up to 73,144 pounds. Uh, and if you want to donate, use just the link below. I will pin it below this video so you know that you're getting the right link. Um, and thank you if, on Pete's behalf if you're donating Project Constantine. It is the 4th of July in Britain. They're voting today uh, for perhaps a new government. We don't know. We'll find that out shortly. Happy Treason Day, Ungrateful Colonist. It's only treason if you lose. <laughs> All right. Thank you, my friends. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes, and thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.